fire extinguisher and squirt you guys. So you get to kind of a long week to prepare? And yeah, you know, this has been great. You know, we had yesterday off and uh, had a good practice today. And I think there's, you know, a little freshness to them, which I think is really important right now. And uh, Ohio State plays tonight. They got uh, Northwestern at home. and. If you look at Ohio State, it's a, it's a strange team. I mean, they they really got some talent. And they're, you know, early on they were ranked and they were playing good. And like happens in this league, one thing to be aware of is I think they missed, uh, I think they went five of the seven games they lost were at home, were on the road. And then unfortunately for them, they got, you know, upset by Minnesota at home. But that's how you get into a situation. But. They've got a lot of home games coming up. They've had a lot of road games in the first part of their schedule. How much of that freshness for your team is coming off a win? How much of it is just getting a couple extra days? Well, I think both, but I think coming off a win always helps. But I really think it's the days, and, you know, I, I really do. Um, as you know, our schedule's changed a little bit here in the last week. So um, we got a little more time for the last game, and then we got time for this game. When I say time, it's just normal time. It's just not the normal that it's been. When you look at them, Tom, do they, do they kind of personify the, the weirdness of the league this year in terms of maybe, just, I guess, the, the danger of a team that's lower in the standings? Of oh, yeah. I mean, you got to remember, I think they were ranked as high as 13th, you know. Um, they had North Carolina all but beat and lost that game. They, they played some other teams and played them well. Um, so the first part of their schedule, they were really good. You know, they won their first two Big Ten games. And then, like I said, there's a difference between being on the road and not being on the road. They've got a couple of freshmen that might have hit some of the wall like we did. But uh, Sanzibar's, you know, as good a player as there is in our league. And I, and I really believe that uh, if you look at them, uh, they've got some experience, some fifth and sixth year guys. And then they've got a couple of freshmen and they got one transfer who's really good from Oklahoma State. So um, it's a talented team and key in the middle uh, you know, he was hurt a couple of those games. That's another reason for those losses. Uh, he's back almost full go now, and uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's a really good team. Oh, is, it, is it tougher to win on the road than ever? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's tough to win on the road. Uh, first of all, I don't know if it's any different. They're just there's better teams, so they're more evenly matched. So it used to be to go on the road and uh, – if the team wasn't quite as good, you could get a win. But if the team's just as good as you are, sometimes it matters if you're home or away. And right now, uh, it has been hard to win on the road, as you can see, for a lot of teams. You look at the difference in Maryland, their home stats and road stats were just incredible. Um, you know, we've been average both places, so we're not as up and down. Or if the Big Ten's a little old school. I mean, Purdue seems to be above everybody, but everyone else is clogged together, kind of like the old days. I don't ever remember. I've been in this league 38, nine years, and I don't ever remember it clogged like it is now. I mean, there's more seven and five, seven and six teams, and I mean, good teams, you know. And so it makes it look bad because of the crazy net and all that stuff that the uh, analytics people do. Uh, what really matters is there's some good teams in our league. You know, right now, you know, Indiana's playing as good as anybody. Iowa's playing really good. Uh, Illinois has been playing better. Uh, so, you know, Maryland was on a hot streak. Rutgers is, is a very good team. I just think there's a lot more really good teams, maybe not as many great teams, but definitely not any poor teams. I mean, Minnesota, with their, with their record is poor, but if we had three guys out like they've had, including their best player at center, we'd probably be in the same boat. You mentioned the freshman wall, talking about them. That's something we haven't asked you about this year, I don't think. How do you think your three guys are handling that? Oh, Trey's hit the wall a little bit. You know, he's hit the wall a little bit, and we talked to him about it last week. And I mean, it happens to all freshmen. It just depends on the magnitude of it. But, uh, you know, Carson hasn't played enough to hit the wall, and, and Jackson's in the middle, you know. But uh, it definitely it affects every freshman. I mean, uh, you know, we've got 80, 90 practices in. They didn't have 80, 90 days of basketball in high school, much less, you know, the whole deal. So it's normal, it's, and it's normal for everybody else, too. And that could be some of the reasons some of these teams, not as many teams are playing many freshmen right now. Everybody's playing their grad transfers and guys that are 
Fred's age and stuff like that, old guys, you know. By the, I know, I know. But uh, better shape too, though. So. Any any tried and true method to go through that, or you just kind of got to slog through it and see when they? No, you know, I, I mean, I I've, I've had freshmen for 30 years, 28 years here as head coach, and it, it's part of the process, you know, that nobody understands except people in it. It's just part of the process, you know. You, you know, I, I ran a marathon a couple times back in the day. And they all talked about the 20-mile mark hitting the wall. You heard of it, you know? So I get to the 20th mile, and I'm feeling great. And I said, screw this wall stuff. What are these guys talking about? I got the, almost the 21-mile mark. My face started going numb. I started feeling terrible. I, I started walking. I cramped up. I didn't finish my first marathon. It's the same, you know? It, it might happen two weeks into January, three weeks, four weeks, you know? It's usually the end of January, beginning of February. But uh, it's like death and taxes. It, it, it happens. With Trey in particular, um, what, what have you seen from him in terms of being a stabilizer with the books? You're giving him good minutes for a freshman, and then what do you see? Yeah, you know, we him? are, but, uh, you know, we put the leash on him. Trey's a guy that goes 100 miles an hour and trying to figure out how teams are playing, yet it just takes some time. I think I think we got to do a little job, better job of being patient with him, too, you know, trying to tell him exactly what we want so he can kind of run our team instead of trying to make plays all the time, you know. Keep yourself in the game. He's a very good defender. We need him. The more rest we can get AJ, the better, and uh, the better he'll be at the end of games. And I think that's been one of our problems is we haven't finished as strong, you know, and some of that was the fatigue of what we went through, and some of it is how we're subbing. And uh, I'd be the first to say I didn't do as good a job either. Do you want Trey to be more offensive-minded, or is he kind of like you mentioned the other no, night about No, I Maddie don't want him to be. Yeah, I think he needs to play his role. I don't think he needs to be more up. Hey, not a great shooter yet, getting better, but I think he needs to run our team and uh, and defend, and he can defend. That would help us more. We, we got enough offensive players if our offensive players are. You know, Jaden's playing really well and shooting the lights out. And, uh, you know, Joey can shoot it, and... Getting Malik. Malik had a good day today, so uh, fingers crossed because he had a good day today and made it through the whole practice, and that was encouraging. Do you find that because you're getting a little healthier, you're getting better practices lately? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, no. I mean, we're getting better practices because we're having them. I'm going to hope three and a half weeks with not having any practices. It seems like all we did is to do prep for the next team. So I think we're getting better practices because we're having practices. But, uh, you know, definitely when you're healthier, you know, you, you think of what's one body, you know. But when that one body was playing 30 minutes and all of a sudden you're dividing those minutes up, it's a lot. So, yeah, I, I, maybe a combination of both. But I think just having some time to practice has been beneficial. Tom, I'm wondering what you made of uh, your buddy Ishbia's big move last night. And does it benefit you guys at all having a former player as an NBA, NBA owner now? I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to use it in my recruiting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my players that I have a direct line <laughs> every recruit. Now, you know what? I watched this press conference. I took the time to watch this press conference. I was so proud of him. He, he did such a good job. And then uh, I did talk to him early this morning. And... and uh, I told him that nothing like starting out making a splash, you know. I thought it was a great move, you know. It's, uh, I don't know the particulars of all the trade and Four what you give. Picks. What? Four first round draft picks. Yeah, players. that's, uh, you know, I watched draft day and that's a little bit, uh, but at the same time, you got Chris Paul there right now, you got Booker there, you got some people, Aiden, that, uh, you know, that league is down to the point where you got to strike while the iron's hot and, uh, and while you got your personnel in place, you know, it's like, it'd be like pro teams with a quarterback, you know, it's the same thing. And uh, so I, I think it was, uh, I mean, KD's got some years left, Booker's got some years left, you know, I don't know how much Chris has left, but uh, why not take it while you can take it and see what happens. And uh, this day and age, um, hell, in two years, maybe, uh, you know, those first round picks won't mean as much because the salary cap's gonna go up. And, Everything changes, and, but I know this. Um, what impressed me is that, you know, first of all, you know he's been thinking about this before he actually took over, but um, not afraid to make a make a move, you know, and uh, and that's what I said to people out in Phoenix about Matt. You know, Matt's not in it as a toy. 
There's a lot of guys in it to have a toy and make some money later on. Um, he's not stupid, but he's in it to win a championship. I promise you that. And that's uh, his mentality, be the best. And that's what he's trying to do. When uh, you looked at the film, was Maryland exceptional with the defensive box outs? Or did you guys have not guys that weren't? No, we did a terrible job. Terrible job of even going to the offensive glass. Our wings didn't go at all. Um, we usually have guys that go. Um, I mean, I'm sure Maryland did a better job because usually when they play us, that's that's high on the scouting report. But uh, I can't give anybody credit for that. I can give me and my team a lot of blame. That That's ridiculous. And uh, so you can bet tomorrow and the next day uh, we're going to be working on offense. Is that the lowest figure you can remember? Yeah, because in my mind it was none. Two team ones that ball went out of bounds or something. You know? It was none. So that was the lowest I can remember. But but I'd rather, again, win ugly than lose pretty. It's one thing I'm getting smarter at. Looks like the transition game showed some sparks here. It did, against a pressing team, and that was encouraging. That's why AJ got eight, nine assists, you know. I mean, he wasn't that far from a triple-double. And I think, um, you know, I think he can start realizing that a few less shots, a few less points, but others in other ways is going to make us a better team. So um, uh, that was encouraging for him, too. You got North and South was kicking the ball out. Yeah, you got North and South. got downhill, as we say, and uh, getting downhill made a big, big difference. And uh, so now we got to work on some things, on spacing and stuff like that. But... We, uh, you know, I still say, as I said this summer, as I said, I like the team. I don't like the way we do things all the time. I, I don't know why we're been poor offensively, except we didn't practice enough, and then we didn't have a key guy practicing. So we weren't, we weren't, we were really connected as a team, and we're really connected defensively, and we weren't very connected offensively. See Garland out there coaching. You must be feeling better. Garland's doing right. Terry Samuel's back. It's great, man. We got some people back here. Uh, but uh, Garland, uh, this is still his home. He's still here. He works out in Draymond Center over there. And uh, he's back working his butt off. And uh, still ornery, still telling me what I did right and wrong. Things haven't changed in 35, 40 years. A lot of times you look at when a player is doing something well, Hauser was getting 10, 12 rebounds a month or so ago. Well, there is load management with him. I mean, I swear to God, he's worn out from those six games in 16 days. But in fairness to Joey in this game, he did a great job of cutting his man out, which was one of the big keys for us. We wanted our wings to get more rebounds. So I'm not as concerned with his number as I was with his performance, and his performance was pretty good. In the locker room the other night, I thought you'd be happy to hear AJ talked about how uh, free, throw, free throw cutouts are lodged in his brain from a couple years ago. He said, I thought you'd want, I know, I thought you'd want to hear that. Yeah, and free throw shooting <laughs> logged in his brain. That's, yeah, a whole different deal. Uh, two years ago, I wouldn't even have him in at the end of the game. <laughs> Thanks, Tom.